and welcome to the Premier Football Podcast. I'm Rafe Garland and welcome to this very special uh, reactionary piece reacting to the, the biggest news of the week. Big thanks to Joe yesterday who did his uh, reactionary piece to Pacha sacking, which we thought was going to be the biggest news of the week. But obviously, in the hours afterwards, Jose Mourinho has been announced as the new Tottenham Hotspur coach, which is just absolutely massive. Now, today is my actual birthday and thanks to everyone for their birthday wishes. But... I could not have asked for a better birthday present than the return of Jose Mourinho to the Premier League. Now, I'm not a Tottenham fan. Um, I'm, I'm fairly impartial and different to Spurs as a club, but I am so, so delighted to have Mourinho back in the Premier League. We'll have a quick look um, as to what it means for Spurs, uh, where they go from here, how they deal with brokered, where, where it came from, and just kind of have a quick look at and and see how we expect them to do uh, going forwards in the role. So, obviously, Potch was sacked last night uh, around 7 o'clock. The news broke and Mourinho was announced at 6am this morning officially. Um, although the, de- the deal was leaked to be confirmed online last night. Late last night, about half 11, 12. The deal has said to have been in negotiations for about three weeks now since the 1-1 draw at Watford. Now, obviously, in his press conferences over the last year in public, at every opportunity, Poch has has taken the opportunity to get a dig in at Levy. And he's been very non-committal over his Tottenham future. And as much as he has been maybe the best coach that Tottenham have had in the Premier League era, obviously, he's been there for five and a half years. He's established them as a Premier League top four force they nearly won the league in 2015-16 they were obviously Champions League finalists last year they've they've come on so much and Mourinho is believed to rate the squad really really highly he thinks that there's not a lot of work that needs to be done with the squad that a lot of the, the bones are in place for a top top side there and I don't think that there are too many people that would argue with him the only question marks that there would be are over the future of a few key players at the club. Obviously, Christian Eriksen is, is coming into the last few months of his contract. Jan Vertonghen, Toby Olderweld, um, and Ugo Lloris. I think he's got a little bit of time left, but he's not uh, He's not committing his future yet either. Now, maybe the change of manager, like we saw at Manchester United, might convince a couple of these guys to stay a bit longer, but I don't think that the club will be too upset to see maybe a few of them leave and free up a bit of, a bit of money off the wage bill. Uh The wage bill is something that's quite interesting to think about because obviously Jose Mourinho is known for coming in and spending money at clubs and and really being an instant success. Whenever a new manager arrives at the club, there is normally an instant lift, but I would be absolutely shocked if Jose didn't go out over the summer and make one or two signings just to strengthen strengthen the side, boost competition for places and really, really bring the buzz back. The club have come out and said that he was the man for the job because of his winning mentality. Now, obviously, Jose Mourinho has won trophies all over the world. He's won Champions Leagues in Portugal, in Italy, in Spain. He's won the Premier League. He's won he's won trophies around the continent, um, league, league trophies around the continent. He's won trophies in England, which is something that Tottenham have failed to do. As, as, as fantastic as they've been under Pochettino, as, as good as the football has been, as expansive as they've been, how they had a young squad that people liked. And that I think that's the end of that era now. People are not going to like Tottenham Hotspur anymore. Jose Mourinho is the man in charge. You know, he's box office. People will sit, they'll listen to him, but they, they don't like him. <laughs> so I think Spurs can forget about being media darlings for as long as he's in charge, probably the next two and a half years. He, it's, it's very, very rare that he stays longer than that. But I think it's, it's fun. They're the team to watch now. Obviously, look, Liverpool are, are coming into their... Period. This is this is what Klopp's been working for for years. Has been to build this team that'll maybe challenge this year and the next year. We'll see how see how they can go over years after that. Trying to keep up that intensity, they'll have to change the squad a little bit as they move on. So I think Liverpool have really got this year and next year, and it'll be so interesting to see how Spurs do over the next two two and a half years under Mourinho. This year will obviously be a, a building year, a rebuilding year. It's what he always does. The first year he sets it up, and the second year he goes hard. So next season. I think Premier League fans have got to be absolutely licking their lips. This Liverpool team going head to head with with Spurs. If Arsenal can change their manager this year, maybe make a signing or two, they'll be in it. City might even change their manager. Guardiola looks like he could be coming to the end of it. So I think next year is going to be a fantastically interesting year in the Premier League. This year, obviously, as well, to see how they can claw themselves back into it. They're obviously 14th now going into the weekend, but they're only five points, or sorry, three points off fifth. So, I mean, absolutely nothing is impossible. 
this season in terms of Champions League football, obviously, and they are obviously in the Champions League as well with every chance of going through to the next stage. Um, so perhaps you could have a tilt at that this year. The only maybe question mark over Mourinho is whether or not he's going to be given the money to spend at Spurs. Pochettino had been told that he had to sell to buy, quite similar to the Benitez era at Liverpool, and that that really seemed to have been the thing that pushed Poch over the edge. People will say that Levy is the hardest, most difficult chairman to work underneath, but let's not forget that Mourinho is no stranger to working with difficult chairman. I mean, he's worked under Roman Abramovich twice and has had fantastic relationships. Now, Abramovich is, is renowned for going out and signing players that he wants willy-nilly, and there was a lot of suggestion that Abramovich back in the day would actually used to almost demand what players were picked on on match day and who gets in the squad and who doesn't. And he's an incredibly demanding chairman. And Mourinho had a lot of success at Chelsea. And obviously Perez at Real Madrid is incredibly demanding as well. And Mourinho winning back-to-back Champions Leagues at Real Madrid is, is quality, is testament, sorry, to his ability to, to work in difficult situations un, under demanding chairman, people that have their own demands. Now, I don't think Poch will have any difficulty finding a job anywhere in Europe, maybe even in England. I think it'd be fantastic to see him go somewhere like Arsenal. I know Joe touched on it, saying that he's not sure how he would feel about it. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. Pochettino is one of the best managers in in the world. He's a top, top manager. I think he, more so than anything, was burned out working for Levy. He'd done a fantastic job there. And his own breakdown the breakdown in the relationship between him him and Dan Levy is, is what's caused maybe the poor performances and the lack of motivation from the squad. But I think Jose Mourinho is going to come in and give these guys such a lift. He's going to give the give the league a boost. And it's just it's just fantastic to have him back. Now, obviously, obviously, all neutrals are looking forward to the the collapse in in two, two and a half seasons, you know, when when Hummin Song is playing as a, a left wing back. Um, Christian Eriksen has been reverted to a, a number six. They're playing. They're playing five four one every week. You know, it's long balls over the top for Harry Kane trying to chase, and it will go that way. The fans will turn on. The players will turn on him. The the board will turn on him. It'll all happen, and it'll all be absolutely box office. And and, and we'll all be sitting here with our popcorn, enjoying every single second of it. But Tottenham are going to be a force over the next two years. Before that happens, don't get me wrong. I mean, Jose Mourinho managed to somehow finish second in the Premier League with that bang average Manchester United team that he inherited from Louis van Gaal. Bang average Manchester United team. Now, this is a man that's won several Champions Leagues, like we said, league titles all around Europe. And he's come out and said himself that his biggest achievement in football is finishing second with that Manchester United team. They were awful. He won the FA Cup with them. He won the Europa League with them. And he finished second place in the league with a terrible team. This Spurs team are much, much better than that United team. Now, I know they're coming up against two dominant teams in Liverpool and City, not just the City team as it was back then. But, I mean, look out, neutrals, because Jose Mourinho is back in town. I am buzzing for it. I know Joe, as much as he's an Arsenal fan, does not want to see Tottenham do well. He's absolutely buzzing to see Jose Mourinho back in the Premier League. The Arsenal fans wanted Jose at Arsenal, they didn't get him. He's gone to Spurs. I would love to see Poch go to Arsenal, go full circle and see those two absolutely scrapping it out. I love these individual battles in the league. I am absolutely buzzing. Jose is back. The special one, the ridiculous one, the box office one. It, Like I said, it's the best birthday present I could have asked for. I'm so happy. Welcome back to the Premier League, Jose. We love you as much as we absolutely detest you. You are absolute slime. You're an absolute cretin. You are not a nice guy, as much as you pretend you are in the media these days. You know what I mean? You're, it's, it's all for the cameras. It's all for show. You, you, you hang young players out to dry in public. You play players out of position. You, you disgruntle fans. You, you upset players. But you get the job done. And you are fantastic viewing. I'm sure that we are going to talk so much about you over the next couple of years Jose like we said fantastic to have you back in the Premier League from the bottom of my heart welcome back that's been it thanks guys um, we'll be recording our pod later in the week hopefully have it up on Friday evening uh, we'll see you then cheers thanks